Alright, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite, and welcome back to Harvest December. This is Bridal, is in June. As for me, I, I was just me, so I could only be myself. I chuckled out at that ridiculous phrase. I walked to the magazine corner and stopped by the lifestyle magazine rack, something that I rarely did. There were several magazines featuring New Year events and campaigns because of the end of the year was because the end of the year was near. I thought about what I should do. Hard. Because my inexperience of life, I couldn't come up with anything. But with my inexperience of life, I couldn't come up with anything. Maybe if I asked Kohai or Dad, they would come up with a good solution, but I decided to go with what I usually do when I'm stuck. Research. So there I was in the bookshop, wandering around for several hours, ignoring the shopkeeper's grumpy looks. Impossible. I can't do this. I surrendered in my head. All of the magazines suggested giving gifts and had a wide range of suggestions, but they didn't look promising as something Yuki would like. Not only was she born into a wealthy family that could afford her anything she wanted, Yuki wasn't materialistic enough to begin with. I didn't think of the orthodox I didn't think the orthodox gift giving strategy would work on her. Negative thoughts f flitted through my mind. I couldn't think of anything that Yuki would want. I wasn't a materialistic person either, so I couldn't understand the mentality of it in the first place. In addition to that, I didn't have enough money to buy anything of Yuki's standard. What did I know about Yuki? I even began to doubt if I ever dated her. What am I going to do? I put the magazine back on its rack and sighed. Looks like you're trying to make an effort there, a stranger said as she clapped me on the shoulder. Um, do I know you? I didn't remember her, but her friendly attitude made me ask. You know, that time when you had the babysitting job? Oh. That jogged my memory. This was the lady that was standing next to me when I bought the first baby book in March. You're trying to run after your wife that left you? She's just way... She's just away in a different place, getting ready to give birth. That's what they all say. She didn't leave me, she's just away for a while. Hey! Don't cry. Sniff. I know she left me. I'm sorry. Here, come with me. I'll listen to whatever you have to say. Just make... You're making me look like a bad guy here. Huh? But... Just come. She dragged me away. That was very... Interesting. And then... Well, ladies, what do you think? Now that we know his side of the story, he doesn't look like the dependable sort. She probably got fed up with him. You guys are mean. Nah, she just probably wasn't satisfied with his nightly prowess. Wait a minute. Maybe it's the opposite. These types can get vigorous once the lights are turned off. Um... I was taken to the women's magazine corner and was now surrounded by a group of ladies. I later heard some made a trip specially to just to join the gossip. Well, this is a situation I'm familiar with. I was on my knees, sitting in the center of the circle of women looking down at me. Although I had to admit, it was kind of comforting too. So you're trying to win her back with a gift strategy. The lady that clapped me on the shoulder said as she pur pursed her lips. Um, is that a bad idea? You're on the right track. Levi Strauss and Moss would agree with you. And it's easy to see how serious you are about... Serious you are by how expensive the gift is. But, she looked down at me, her lips still pursed. You know the Princess of Tawada won't fall for it, don't you? Exactly. So what would you do if you were in my shoes? That's a difficult question considering your target. You know how we women in general are the takers. I'm not sure if I would agree with that. For example, Valentine's. We do it because we get so much back from a simple bar of we get so much more back from a simple bar of chocolate. I didn't want to know the dirty reality of it. No suggestions? I suppose we do have to give you some sort of advice, as your seniors. The women all crossed their arms and nodded at each other. Onlookers threw us worried looks as if they were witnessing a cult. Give her something with meaning. Meaning? I mean, I could have told you that. In this case, the monetary value won't count. I'll have you know, this was a very, pr uh, this was a very particular case. Usually, 90% of the gift's value depends on how expensive it is. Remember that for future reference. Alright. Care to evaluate? Taking Valentine's chocolate as an example again. Compared to a store-bought gift, a handmade confection increases in value even through it, even though substance-wise it's the same thing. So what should I get? That's what you have to think of! All the women yelled in unison. Sorry, but why are you helping me? Who wouldn't want to be part of this excitement? Besides, she grinned, we all love happy endings. Thank you. I bowed my head deeply. You should rest a little, Shiro pressed. Yuki was knitting continuously. I feel it better when I'm distracted this way. 
Yuki was getting thinner and thinner by the day. And by the way, this is something I started wondering like a couple chapters ago, but is Yuki going to survive this story? I feel bad because I'm like grinning when I say that, but that would be a very interesting ending if Yuki doesn't actually survive this story. And one that I wouldn't have seen coming for the vast majority of it. Anyway. Moving on, she was a slender girl to begin with. It was hard to watch her belly grow larger and larger while the rest of her wasted away. On the other hand, the thinner she got, her eyes shone brighter, harder as if to make up for the rest of her. Now, whenever she was, now whenever she had morning sickness, she always threw up blood. Come on, don't need these details. I was thinking of going and eating lunch after this, but I don't know if that's happening now. Shira couldn't believe Yuki was human. She had a mentality made of steel. Don't you have anything you want to eat? I'll get Mikami to bring you some food. If I eat now, my senses will go dull. I was asking for the child. I can't stomach anything now, I'll just throw it all up. You'll die with a child if you don't eat, you know. Yuki dropped her eyes and continued to admit. I'm sorry, Yuki. Why are you apologizing? We're in the same boat now. I should be the one looking after you since I'm older. If we were in the same boat, that means we, were e we are equal. You are still a child. Yuki stopped knitting to listen. We we're both going to bear children soon. I insist that you eat. What if it was Mashiro's cooking? Would you eat that? Maybe if it was Mother's cooking? I'll make, I'll make them bring some porridge. We can ask, damn it. We can ask Mikami to, re to reheat it for you using the microwave. Yuki's stomach growled. That was embarrassing. It tells me you're still alive. Shira crawled out from the kotatsu towards the telephone in the corner of the room. Because her belly was so large now, it took effort for her to stand. Shiro. What? You're like my mother, and you're too stubborn to be my daughter. The telephone was polished to a high shine reflecting its surroundings. Daughter, huh? She realized that she was smiling as she dialed the number. I'd normally require my patients to keep an empty stomach for the checkups, but in this case, Yuki's nutrition is on top priority. Dr. Minaka looked genuinely, re genuinely relieved as she watched Yuki dig into her porridge. Come to think of it, you don't strike me as the type you can cook, Yuki. I beg to differ. I am well trained in the kitchen. What can you make? Anything that goes into a bento box. And I'm pretty good at salting cabbages too. Salting cabbages, is that the best you can do? Shiro doubted Yuki's cooking skills even more. Well, you've both come so far. Well, you've both come far. All we have to do now is wait for the delivery day. Shirasama, you seem alright. Of course, how many children do you think I've had? If there are anything to worry about, it would be... Dr. Monaka didn't finish her sentence. They both glanced at Yuki at the same time. Being a doctor, she had an accurate assessment of how much Yuki was suffering. Hmm? Aren't you going to have some? We're alright. We've been eating properly. Go ahead. Finish it all. I've been eating mayonnaise for a week. I see. That's reassuring. No, it wasn't. It was an awful diet for a doctor. I feel like my blood's all returned. Like all my blood's returned, Yuki said as she placed her spoon down. I'm ready for the checkup now. No, it is not necessary. My main objective is, to, is was to make you eat. This checkup can be done another time. But it was a long journey here for you. Might as well make use of your time here. Then you better take a good care of yourself and recover by the next time I make my visit. Dr. Monaka said as she stood up. Going home already? You look sleepy. Mmm. Just as Dr. Monaka pointed out, Yuki had her eyelids half closed. The food made her drowsy. Rest when you need to. I will if you say so. But what about Shiro? I'll send Minaka off to the door, Shiro said. The two walked outside and closed the door. The air was still. The vast snowy world Mikami created still felt strange to Shiro. Thanks for being discreet back there, Dr. Minaka said. How bad is it? For now, we have to worry about her eating and getting enough rest. Force her to eat if you must. Dr. Minaka squinted her eyes in scrutiny. Shiro-sama, you seem fine. Hmm? I'm experienced. Of course I'm fine. I thought you'd be more depressed after leaving Masaki. You're right to think so, but that's not the case. If I break down now, who's going to take care of Yuki? She's the one losing herself without him. Are you alright without him? I have Yuki to take care of. I can't afford to, t to cry like a little girl. Yuki Tawada's condition is extremely unstable now. I just hope she, managed to she manages to keep herself together till the child is born, Dr. Minaka said in a low voice. I decided the pork cutlet sandwich didn't taste so bad after all. In the afternoon, I was busy thinking over things. In the evening, I was busy chasing wolves. It was no wonder I was hungry. 
The first time it tasted bad because I was depressed, I told myself. I was pretty simple-minded. I flipped through the pages of the women's magazine while I chowed down on, the, on a bag of jam rolls I had bought for lunch. The woman at the bookshop had given me a stack of women's magazines for research. Research, huh? Unlike the men's magazines, where once a gift was given, it was done and over, the women's magazines wrote about what to do after the gift was given, too. I found the information indigestible. The woman I had agreed, the woman and I had agreed Yuki Tawada wasn't the type to be swayed easily by gifts. Even if I had bought her something expensive, there was a danger she would not know what the value of it if it was unfamiliar to her. I needed to find something with meaning, something that would move her emotionally, something that would prove that I cared. I thought about the past year I had spent with her. We met. She fed me lunch every day. We walked together to school. I made her worry a lot. We did the babysitting job together, but only I got paid. And then I got her pregnant in a pretty weird way. You can say that. I see. I nodded. I've been an asshole. I threw my desk over. Oh man, table flip. It took me an entire year to realize I hadn't given her anything at all. I was always on the receiving end. Of course you would leave me. No, I shouted. You mean you never noticed? One of my classmates asked. Kono's just blind when it comes to himself. But... But? I like him a lot better this way. Yeah, it's bad of us to approve of his shortcomings, but at least it looks like he's back on track. I guess once you fall all the way down, only way is to make your mind up to... Everybody fell silent, noticing the change in me. I was frozen on the spot, staring at the girl who was speaking. The only way is to make up my mind. Uh, why is he looking at me like that? Look away. Those are the eyes of a sexual predator. I didn't care what they said about me now. That's it! I yelled and dashed out of the room. All my classmates looked confused. I ran into a different classroom. I made a beeline for the person I wanted to meet. Misaki. Aotagami looked surprised to see me. She was surrounded by several girls eating, eating their lunch. Um, Aosama, do you mind giving us some privacy? All the girls, beautiful girls I might add, from juniors to seniors, obediently made a space between us. I walked up to stand right next to her. What's the matter? I could hear her classmates murmuring in awe, but the way she wasn't intimidated by a sudden confrontation. Yeah? I got down on my knees. Um, Misaki, I have a favor to ask of you, I begged as usual. The weekend came. The train was a half hour late because of snow. Small children were warming their hands by a stove set in the middle of the carriage. On, I yawned. Oh, that's a yawning noise, not like a, I don't know, whatever I just said. Ow ignored me, looking at the scenery outside the window as she leaned her cheek against her palm. I almost dozed off. It's because of the patrols during the weekdays. You mean you guys are still doing that? Uh, by the way, thanks for coming out with me during the weekend. You're all sorts of wrong, outside. I fidgeted uncomfortably in my chair. Do you realize you shouldn't be asking your ex of all people to do this for you? Well, you are the closest person I could think of that was about Yuki's size, I explained, knowing that wasn't a very good excuse. You make it sound like I'm skinny and flat-chested. I was talking about bone structure. Same thing. Misaki, what happened to your common sense? You dumped me. Yet you're asking me out during the weekend because... She paused a second of breath. You only wanted to use my body. Her voice traveled through the entire carriage. Aosama, wait. That sounds as if I... I stood up to defend myself, worried the people around us would misinterpret her words. As usual. Oh, it's Kono-san's kid. I thought it sounded like it. Nothing to be surprised about. Huh? What is this reaction? Why are you all so convinced? It's not what it sounds like. Please, listen to me. Hey. Wake me up when we get there. What? Aosama. Please, help me save my reputation. Don't sleep now. I desperately tried convincing everybody that the, in the for the rest of the trip. Fortunately, not a single person believed me. Good job, Misaki. After we finished shopping, we stopped by a cafe to take a rest before we returned to Tagami Town. It was also because I wanted to thank Ao for her help. Being with her, I, reminded, I was reminded that Ao Tagami was a head-turner. Just as there are so many men that stop to admire her beauty, there are many women that gathered near because of her fame. Uh, Aosama? But now that she was wearing an intimidating scowl, wearing an intimidating scowl, she was fierce enough to send everybody running for miles. I understand how you feel, but perhaps hiding your displeasure might be a better choice in a world where conflict isn't considered desirable. What? Eek! 
I wasn't the only person cowering under her glare. As I looked around, I found the other customers slowly turning to leave. May I take your order, please? If I had known what you were up to, I wouldn't have come. I ignored the waitress that was trying to smile with great effort. She was holding her metal tray with trembling hands. What? Eek! You're irritating me. I come by once you've decided your order. The waitress dashed away as if she couldn't wait to leave us. I want to order. I called out stabbingly. Eh? The waitress screeched, making a funny noise I couldn't describe. She spun around quickly to come back. Oops. And unable to control herself, she slipped and fell. I thought the other staff would come and help her and take the order, come and take up the order, but terribly sorry. The cafe owner shot out from the kitchen, and quickly exchanged the warped metal tray for a new one, and picked up the notepad. He then pulled the waitress up, shoved the tray and notepad at her, and whispered, "Hira, I'll clean this up so you go hurry take her order." But shouldn't you go and take the order instead, sir? Just go, go now, or I'll you'll lower your salary. Okay. They had a quick conversation that determined the waitress's fate, and finally the waitress came back. Sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah. The poor girl stood there waiting to suffer under Al's command. I wouldn't call it professionalism, it was more because she was trying to save her lifeline. Your, your order, please. Sorry, I've decided to order later. Two coffees, onion instead of sugar, and chocolate cake. Um, the waitress stared at me in surprise. She was about to burst out into tears. I nodded slowly towards the kitchen. This was just what I meant. I've ordered. Now go. Run. Save your soul. Don't mind me being left here. Thank you, sir. I'll never forget this. At least till my shift is over today. The banter in the story is so weird. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, she had understood me well. She quickly turned down, took down my order and ran towards the kitchen. You're going to take sides with that girl you don't even know. And now, I was put on the firing line. You don't have to be mean. You actually remembered my usual order, she said as she looked out the window. I'd, e I'd even forgotten myself that I took honey instead of sugar. She was still in a bad mood, but her temper had softened considerably. I thought it was a strange habit, so I remembered. I don't know what I, whether I should be happy you remembered or wish you never cared. I'm sorry. Your memories aren't at fault. If anything were to blame, it would be our actions. The coffee came, she poured the honey and stirred it up. I don't like coffee to begin with, but honey and coffee? That just... that doesn't... Never mind. She smiled, saying this was exactly how she remembered it tasted. I felt awkward staring at her, so I poked my cake. Thanks for today. I'm pretty sure the staff thought we were together. But I needed you to try it out. I needed to see what it looked like. I have to warn you though, it, you got what was in my size. If you happens to be a different size, I'm not taking any complaints. Do I look that hopeless? You are hopeless, that's why I need to tell you. I laughed and I felt embarrassed. When I'm with you like this, it's just like the old days. I didn't know how to react, so I simply nodded. It wasn't so long ago that we were having fun. How things have changed. Including me, Al added. Nobody eats lunch together anymore. They were all calm alone. My kid sister's depressed. Misaki, you realize this is all you're doing, right? Things wouldn't have turned out this way if it weren't for you. Al has a sister? Since when? Hey. I didn't mean things. To, I didn't mean to have things turn out this way. I know, but you don't need to repent. I don't think I'm contradicting myself when I say that. Without you, Tagami would be a boring old town with countryside in the countryside, with people just living their lives without putting much thought into what they are doing. For better or worse, you've changed things. I don't know how I should take that. I was talking about the result of the string of events and occurrences that I had not caused intentionally. It was as if she had been judging me without my knowing it and had suddenly decided to pass on the verdict. Pass the verdict. So let me ask you, Atagami said as she looked straight into my eyes, won't you care what you try- won't you change what you're trying to do? She didn't say what. She was trying- she wasn't trying to be vague. The question was multi-layered. That would be... I found myself hesitating. I wasn't sure what she wanted to hear, and I myself was still unsure what she was- if- uh, I myself still wasn't sure if what I was doing was the right thing. If I were a stronger person, maybe I would have been able to say something better and convince Al that I had that I had everything under control. Hmm. Al smiled at my hesitating self. That's all right. It's typical of you. I thought you'd berate me, tell me I was pathetic. You are, but that's all right. Al swallowed the remainder of the coffee. It means you're seriously thinking about Yuki. 
She's worth your troubling, your troubling your mind. She put down her cup. It hit the saucer make a, making a pretty tinkling noise. I just wish it was me, not her. I stood up and took the bill. Wait, I'm paying. Don't be stupid. You just spent all your money not so long ago. Don't try so hard. Don't be a try hard. She walked towards the cash register. Halfway there, she stopped and turned to say, Good luck, man in love. I could never live up to you, I murmured and shook my head. After parting ways with Ao, I joined Mizuho's patrol group. Hmm, Nasaki-san, did you say that something good happened today? Mizuho asked me the moment she saw me. I'll just say I'll pre I'll just say I'm prepared. Huh? Mizuho tilted her head, confused. She didn't have a clue. Alright, that's it. My name is Dragonite, I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later.